Welcome to Better Bachelor. This is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Uh, you know, there's a gorilla in the room when it comes to families and a lot of society's problems. I think it's something that's incredibly apparent and, uh, you know, it's kind of right in our faces, but we never really talk about it. It's one of those taboo subjects that seems to just get brushed under the rug. Maybe it's because it doesn't turn out to be such a great statistic for women. And this is by no means picking on women as a whole or even individually. It's more of society and what is acceptable and what we accept as being okay. In a story I did a couple of videos ago, I talked about how American um, households are by far and away the ones that have the most single moms that do not have dads involved in the children's lives. And as such, I've got some statistics tonight to share about the problems that this is directly causing for families and for society and for our next generation. And the generation that's growing up today can basically be called the fatherless generation. You know, my two nephews, um, my my parents, let me back up here a little bit. My parents had myself and, and a sister, and we two are fine. But I was close with my father, and my sister was not. As such, um, when she raised her two boys, they their father was not in their life by her choice. She decided to move away and, and have them come with her. And they both ended up getting in trouble with the law by the age of 16 or 17. And by 18, one of them's got now a criminal record. And the, um, and the other one has not only a criminal record, but he also has a kid that he had at 18. And so now he is having arguments with his girlfriend. They're not married, obviously, at 18. And so this kid's now getting raised without a father, uh, which it would be my nephew, at 18. So, you know, how great's an 18-year-old father going to be uh, anyway? So, you know, it's starting to to become more and more so each generation that follow, follows doesn't have respect for the father figure and maybe in a household without the father. As such, that, that positive masculinity, that um, the, the care and the nurturing and the unique way that a father can be present in his children's uh, lives, not only is it dropped out for the last generation, the, the Gen Zers that are coming up, but in many more to follow because we haven't come back to making it important that the man is in the kids' lives. And again, I have some statistics here that are kind of important. So let me pull that up and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. First story I have here, I first saw this headline. I have this on the archive because I don't have a Washington Post subscription. Can I make that go away? Let me see if I can make that go away. So um, it says the, I can't even say that word the bug might break the nuclear family, that wouldn't be a bad thing. When I saw this headline, I kind of got ticked off and I said, you know, yeah, it is a bad thing to not have the nuclear family. We need mother, father, both in lived, uh, both involved in the kids' lives. But that's actually not where um, Ian Marcus Corbin, the writer of this article, was going. What he was saying is, hey, um, and I'll read an excerpt from it, but what he's basically saying is, hey, we also need grandparents around and that having both grandparents and parents in the children's lives not only make it easier for the parents to both work and instead of leaving the kids with a daycare provider, they'd be leave with grandma or grandpa. Um, so kind of keeping it in the family. And I actually agree with him. I think that would be great to have your children raised because ideally I would much rather have any kids that I happen to have raised by my mother and my father, knowing how I turned out, um, versus some daycare provider that's getting, I don't know, 14 bucks an hour that could care less about, about the kids. Let me scoot down here to the important stuff. It says the nuclear family, a home populated by parents and children alone, is often considered the default human norm. But historically and across cultures, the extended family, multiple generations living together and sharing the burdens, pains, and joys of domestic life has been the true default. The nuclear family gradually became widespread only after the Industrial Revolution when a centralized factory-based economy made this smaller form of family economically advantageous, advantageous since it could uproot from extended families and follow work wherever it led. The initial iteration husband's income could support an entire household, which wives for the first time were left to manage full-time entirely alone. 
but this division of labor, labor is hardly the norm today when a dual breadwinner model is often required for household solvency. Children and the old still need to be cared for, of course. That didn't go away simply because the realities of work have changed. But in the rise of two breadwinner home has created um, a pass the baton arrangement whereby many pa parents sp spend their time working for wages while paying someone else to mind their children. And I won't read the whole thing because I've got other stuff I want to talk about. And this will be a very long video. But something that's interesting is that if you look at the past generations before the Industrialized Revolution, or in many, um, many smaller, poorer countries, the, the grandparents live with the parents, live with the kids. And the grandparents can watch the kids if the, if the parents need to go out and do something. And as the, those children grow older, once they get into their early teens or mid-teens, they can now watch after the grandparents and help the parents out. And they all kind of care for each other. Now, we're obviously not, not going to go back to that point in time, but there's something to be said for at least kind of keeping a, a, a close-knit family. Um, when I was in Peru, it was uh, just about last year this time. As a matter of fact, it was last April, um, April 26th of last year. What's today's date? Almost exactly a year ago. I was in April, or I was in um, Peru, and when I was in Peru, we took a hike up to Mount Salkante, and we passed through lots of little villages, and there were places that were set up that were flat ground where we could put our tents and camp kind of off of the, the Incan trails, because we were hiking the trails going up to Salkante. And in this, uh, one little family that had just a small cement square basically of concrete bricks and a tin roof uh they had i think one or maybe two electrical bulbs hanging from the ceiling like if you look at old garages the ceramic where you just had the raw bulb that you screwed in in a pull chain they had two of those bulbs inside there and that was the only electricity that they were sharing with i don't know maybe two dozen other neighbors because they had just put up power lines so they didn't even have the, the running water they got came down off of the, the hillside in the mountains and the electricity they got had just been run through from what we were told a few months prior. So up to that point, they didn't have an electricity and they, but they were friendly and they allowed us to stay on their land. And I didn't speak the, the language. They didn't even speak Spanish. Actually, they spoke whatever the native Peruvian language is. And I don't remember the name of it, but our guides spoke that as well as Spanish, as well as English. And we were allowed to stay on the land and everybody set up their tents and it was a little ways away from the family, but they invited us. They said through the guide, they translated this. They said, anybody that wants to come up near the campfire can dry their clothes and enjoy the fireplace at night. Now, of course, it's very hot um, in Peru, especially in April, um, but it's very muggy. And so it's super humid. And so if you sweat in your clothes or you wash them, they don't dry just by laying them out in the air for several days, unless you get in a patch of sunshine because the humidity is that high. So we washed our clothes and we hung them up on the line near the fire that was very close to it. So the heat from the fire and the dryness would dry them out. And I sat up there and they had mapacho, which are hand rolled uh, cigarettes with, with natural tobacco. And uh, they were giving those out. And I, I, no one else wanted to partake, but I'm like, hey, how many times am I going to be in Peru on an Incan trail where I can enjoy one of these? So I, I, I sat up by the fire by myself. Everybody else was off, off by the tents, maybe 100 yards away. And as I watched this family in, in the concrete bunker, you'd almost call it, just a little stone house, the sun was starting to set. And there were kids that were two or three years old. Their parents were 16 or 17. I mean, very young kids, because again, you know, this is, this is a whole different world than what we have here. Their parents were, I don't know, maybe 40s, 30s, something like that. And their parents, so I think they had like five generations in this little place. It wasn't big at all. Maybe uh, if you know square footage, it might have maybe been 800, 600, 800 square feet for, for close to a dozen people. But as the sun set and I was sitting by the campfire and it got dark, they had already eaten. Inside, you could hear the children and they were singing and clapping and they were giggling and having fun. You could just feel the love coming out of that little building and they were so happy they had nothing they had i mean as far as what americans or you know modern society would say you'd say they have nothing but the games that they played and what they, the songs they were singing they didn't even have a guitar to strum like they were just singing and clapping along 
And what I noticed and what amazed me and really made me have a different view of the world is that you can have nothing and be 10 times happier than somebody that has everything in the world but doesn't have love. And, and, and when I think of relationships and when I think of what I would like, it doesn't mean I, I think of a household with 12 family members inside of it. But, but if I were to have a family, that's, I would want that closeness and that love in a family. And here's someone that had very little, if nothing, except barely a roof over their head, some dirty water they had to boil, and enough electricity to run light bulbs for a couple hours a night. They, they had all the happiness in the world. And they were simple farmers that just one guy would raise cattle and another guy would have bananas and coffee and another guy might have um, pigs and something, and they would all trade amongst themselves. So the whole point is, though, that that the closer the family and the more love there is, the better the children are raised. In today's society, not only are children being raised outside of wedlock, children are being raised by single mothers, children are being raised without fathers, and as such, they also don't have grandparents. Now, Or maybe they have one set of grandparents, which is going to be the mother's. But it's not a full family. And, and so I wanted to read some statistics here before I go too long. Let me read these statistics here. And this is why I think that this, as generations go, until a family unit is returned to whole for children, the government may be able to give the mother money and the single man may be able to pay child support or alimony. But that is never going to replace having a healthy, loving family for kids. And as such, as they grow up, they have dysfunction. They have problems. And they pass those on to the next generation behind them. So things are only going to get worse. You younger guys that are in your you know, late teens, 20s, 30s, you're going to see the generation. You know, I'll see another generation or two, hopefully. You guys are going to see one or two even beyond that. And what you may say, see is eventually the falling apart of society. And I genuinely mean that. But it's going to come from, um, you know, if you've ever watched the movie Idiocracy, I think, and if you haven't, look it up. It's Idiocracy, like idiot, but without the T, Idiocracy. Watch it, because I feel like that's where we're going. I really, really do. That people are just getting um, less intelligent and they're, they're falling away from good societal norms. So let's look at these statistics. I'm just going to read the ones that they took um, from actual either Department of Health censuses or Center from D Disease Control, etc. 63% of youth self-deletions are from fatherless homes, five times the average. 90% of all homeless and runaway uh, kids are from fatherless homes, 32 times the average. 85% of children who show behavior disorder disorders come from fatherless homes, 20 times the average. 80% of people that do not like other people of a different color um, and people with anger problems come from fatherless homes 14 times the average. 71% of all high school dropouts come from fatherless homes, nine times the average. Uh, let me get down to the other ones here. 70% uh, of youths in state-operated institutions come from fatherless homes, nine times the average. 85% of all youths in prison come from fatherless homes. 20 times the average. Uh, and I'm just going to read through the rest of these stats. I know this is a little dry, but I, I want to drive this point home and then we'll talk a little more. 43% um, of children live without their father. That's almost half. Almost half of all kids do not have, are not living with dad. Yes, he may get some visitation rights, but he's not kissing them and putting them to bed. He's not waking them up and cooking them breakfast and sitting on the couch and watching cartoons with them. The, the, the little boy is not laying underneath the car helping his dad wrench on something or, or learning a project around the house like I did. I've learned so, so much from my father and half of it was under the age of 15. Three quarters of it was under the age of 15. 90% uh, of homeless and runaway children are for fatherless homes. 80%, um, let's see, I think they mentioned a couple of these already. 71% uh, of uh, pregnant teenagers lack a father. 60% read that one, read that one. 90% uh, of adolescent repeat arsonists live only with their mother. 71% of high school dropouts, they said that one already. 75% of adolescent patients in chemical abuse centers come from fatherless homes. 70% of juveniles in state-operated institutions have no father. 
father, fatherless boys and girls are twice as likely to drop out of high school. I already read that one. And let's see if there's any more statistics that are good to pull out of here. Um, I think that'll, I'm going to leave this down below. It's called the fatherless generation at WordPress. Um, I'll leave this down below. Please take a look through it. I invite you to, because there's a lot I didn't read. But again, I, I, these tend to get long and I don't want to make these videos too long. But what's happening is that the the fatherless generation that's currently going on from people my age, I'm and, and you know, parents did get, like parents, my parents' age did get divorced, but they usually waited till the kids were out of high school and were getting ready to go off to college or do their own thing before they split ways. Now we have a lot of youth, youth that are growing up where the mother has primary or sole custody before, I mean, just about at birth. So they're, they're growing, going through almost all their lives without fathers. And we see this with um, young men struggling now in college. They're not graduating at the same rates. Young men having problems with not being able to deal with, um, with life crises. They're not able to cope with them. And so you're getting, you know, we joke about soy boy guys and, and soy guys, but the truth of it is men are becoming very feminine and they're not able to handle the stresses and the problems that are being thrown their way. They don't have a positive role model like my father that if I came home and I had a scrap with somebody in school, it wasn't, well, let me call the principal or let me call the teacher and get them involved. It was, well, what happened? Did you throw a punch back? Did you were able to defend yourself? Let me show you how to defend yourself. Let me teach you at least how to have some self-confidence or, or work your way out of this problem. Or if I made another mistake, and I did something wrong and dad said, what's the punishment? And I told him, he said, well, you made the mistake. You got to pay the penalty. There wasn't coddling. It was teaching you how to be a man and how to understand that your decisions have consequences. It seems people don't understand that anymore. And they're not being taught that, especially when a parent makes a bad uh, decision and there's a consequence, but the, the, the parent protects the child from that. Or the, that, you know, boys are bad and girls are good, and that's being pushed through school systems, that's being pushed through modern day television commercials where the men are the dumb idiots and, and aggressive and stupid, and the women are the creative, smart, uh, problem solving, wonderful, you know, that, that sends a message to boys that they're not, they're not valued, that they're not, um, that they're not wanted, that they're bad somehow. And that's not, what, and you don't have a man to be able like someone like myself if I had a kid like my father taught me that I can sit down and say hey look you got to ignore people like this and you can't take this stuff serious and you have to understand here's the problems with these people and let's talk about this you don't have anybody that sits down in logic you know women think with emotion and they're much more emotional than men are most men modern young 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 men many of them too many of them think with emotion and that gets them in a lot of problems because that's not their natural state of how to deal with something so when you're a little bit older guy and you have somebody teach you this and then you teach on to your kids problem solving and logic and stoicism and how to be mature and how to think your way through these things this isn't happening and now there's not that pillar of strength in the family anymore where you know the father is, is kind of the backbone and the mother is the one to handle the emotional problems. You know, the, the you're upset about something and you want a shoulder to cry on. That's my mom. You know, when I had a problem with my divorce and I said, mom, I don't know what to do. It was mom. I don't know what to do. How do, what, what could she be thinking? How do I handle? Cause my father would just say, yeah, man, that's, I don't know what to tell you. Cause he doesn't know anything about women, you know, but if if I were down in the dumps, he'd say, hey, come help me with something, or I need your opinion on something. or, And he'd get me thinking about something else. And his way of talking to me and working through issues was completely different than my mother's. Because it would boil down to, hey, I know this is hard for you, but you, you'll be fine. You just got to, you know, steady, steady through it, so on and so forth. Or my mother would say, oh, I understand, but you're a wonderful boy and you're sweet. And, you know, she doesn't know what she's missing. And you know how moms are, right? So... Without until the, the father returns to the family, I think it's going to get worse every, every generation. And until we have this discussion and until we can step up and, and say this and have people listen to us and stop throwing men away after the, a, a mistake or even a purposeful um, child is born and keeping the men in that family and finding ways to keep men involved, until that happens... I think society is going to get a lot worse and it's going to be up to you young men today 
and men like myself, even if we don't get married, even if we don't have families, even if we don't have kids, it's going to be up to us guys like us to at least help those we can and try to be a, a stoic voice for men, whether it's it's on a channel like mine or just helping out another friend that's maybe going through a hard time or a niece or a nephew or if you do have kids, your, your own child, is to make sure to be able to support them and, and, and fight every chance you get to stay in their lives because that, I think, is extremely important. Guys, if you'd like to support my work, links are below. As always, I thank you for those of you that have supported me. I almost have another donation to send off to the doctors up in, in New Jersey. I spoke with them. They are ahead in money and behind in making the PPE gear. So they don't they don't need another donation just yet. So anything you send me right now, that's for me. So if you want to donate anything more to me, um, that'll be directly. That's either PayPal, uh, Patreon, or my subscribe star. And don't forget to like, comment, share. That's always the best way you can help me out. Those of you that have asked about my bus and want a bus tour and bus video and bus information, I already have that online. It's it's here on YouTube at the unknown adventure you'll see a little white icon with a little picture of a bus in it that's my channel i've only got three or four videos up there because until it's done it's like it, it progress is so slow because i'm waiting from parts uh from amazon because i'm isolated here that i order something it's three weeks go by until i get something and i can't take a picture and go oh look here's four new screws and a you know antenna i put up so so you can follow on my bus adventures over there. Please go check it out. I'd like that that channel to get um, going as well because that way, if something does happen, something does happen to this channel, and for some reason YouTube gives me the the mighty chop, I'll have something else I can I can uh, still have a way to communicate with you guys and share stories from the road. Guys, I'll leave it there. This is Better Bachelor. I'm Joker, and remember, um, until society gets men involved in the next generation that's coming up, until this trend reverses. Society is just going to spin down an awful, awful drain, and I don't think it's going to get better anytime soon.